Welcome to this week's TDD Weekly Report for the week ending July 12th. This is going to be a one-subject TDD report. It's been a kind of a slow news week in the sciences, so I wanted an opportunity to address a request from a viewer of mine, Dave Nicholson, and a good friend, asked about technology and history of technology to do with tractors. So I'm going to talk for about 10 minutes on the history of tractors in the farm and how that can relate to being a fantastic technology and a great gadget. I think one of the top ten, if you would consider technologies that really change the way we do stuff in the 20th century, I would definitely put farm tractors in the top ten. So let's get on with it. Um, the first proper tractor engine was actually a traction engine, and it was more like if you would picture a steam locomotive that they just took it off the tracks and put wheels on it. Now they were not that revolutionary as far as for farming because they were just so big, so clunky, and so expensive. But just to give you a little bit about it, it was developed in 1859 by British engineer Thomas Aveling, and he modified a Clayton and Shuttleworth portable engine, which used to be hauled from job to job with horses, and he developed it into a self-propelled moving piece of equipment and he put a drive chain between the crankshaft and the rear axle but because the things were so huge they required two-man crew and they were extremely expensive it was not going to be something that your average farmer was going to buy or use for a replacement for his horses on a farm so we're going to skip past that and I will get back to a little bit of that when I talk in the future I would like to do a single subject show on locomotives and steam engines and things like that so we will cover that in that area but let's skip ahead to the gasoline powered tractor now there's two guys that are credited with inventing it and I can see the reasons why they both would get credit for that first one is uh, Dan Albone and in 1902 he had a prototype farm tractor and the reason why he's credited is if you look at the picture of it and I'll put the picture up here it looks like a modern style tractor that can pull implements and stuff like that however if you want to get to the basic components of what makes something a tractor it would be some type of a farm motor that was also self-propelled that would do farm work you have to go back to 1892 and John Frolish and he also was one of the reasons why I'm going to get into um, some talk about John Deere about Fordson and about Waterloo these are three companies that built tractors and how they were the ones that really pushed the innovation and they were the the major brands of tractors at least in the US for US agriculture but in 1892 John Frolish um, he, he invented the tractor and it was in Clayton County Iowa USA he took a Van Dusen single cylinder gasoline engine and mounted on a Robison engine chassis which was controlled and propelled by Frolich's gearbox. Now these things to to look at them and describe them you can see why maybe they wouldn't count it as being the same as a modern tractor because it was an um, engine mounted on a wagon and it did have gear and chain to drive it but it was actually the, the beginning models of these were steered by horses. It still kind of looked like it was being pulled by a horse although the horse was not providing the propulsion for it the horse was basically just steering it down the road but later on John Frolich actually started the Waterloo um, the Waterloo boy tractors and he started the Waterloo uh, company um, which certainly did go out of business after uh, he started it up it did not really succeed very well and it closed down but later on it did open up again and that's when we get into John Deere and we get into Fordson company so later on he gave it a try again and he opened the Waterloo Tractor Company and uh, actually built one of, the, one of the most reliable tractors around. They started with the Model F and then the Model N. The Model F sold for around $750 and the Model N, which was the real popular one, sold for um, $1,000. Sold, yeah, sold for around $1,000. And it was also competing at the same time that this tractor was being sold on the market. Ford Motor Company um, by Henry Ford wanted to do the same thing with tractors that they did with Model T's. So they built the Fordson tractor, which was a popular tractor around the cost of $750, um, a little bit cheaper because it was more mass produced. But the thing about the Fordson tractors was they weren't quite as reliable too. They tended to break down a little bit more than the Waterloo tractors and they also had a a flaw in the design the way the implements were hooked onto it if you caught your plow on a stump or a rock you could actually if you kept pulling and kept uh, accelerating you would actually flip the tractor over and there was quite a few deaths on farms because of these Fords and tractors flipping over 
So you had those two companies going, but let's introduce the John Deere company now. John Deere, actually, um, he started as a blacksmith. Let me get the date here. I've got notes down here to give me. I, I know a lot of this information, but uh, as far as the dates, this was back in 1837, John Deere. And believe it or not, John Deere actually was never for a long time uh, famous at all. And in fact, they didn't even produce tractors at all. Their, their few tries at the beginning to make a tractor on their own were total failures. But for the longest time, they were actually an implement company, mostly plows, but also cultivators and other types of equipment pulled behind tractors. And it was only around 1917 that John Deere was actually interested in getting into tractors. Well, just as the Waterloo Company came back into business from John Frolish, they uh, decided to look at other companies manufacturing uh, tractors, and it was the most reliable one that they had. So they actually just bought out the Waterloo Tractor Company. So John Deere did not start based on a tractor model that they designed and built themselves. Those didn't quite work out, but they got the Waterloo Tractor and got the, the ownership of it. And that's how they started out. So they were selling tractors at the same time as Fordson Motor Company. Now I'm going to give you links to all these things too. The, the history is really interesting and all the things going on. But uh, you don't want a TDD report that runs 30 minutes. And all the links down below to these articles I'm using for references and dates and stuff like that. They'll all be down below so you can check them out. <clears throat> but now let's get to the technology of it. Besides the, the fact of the price of the steam traction engines being so expensive and now these being a little bit more reasonable you're still probably talking about a year's wages or more and these farmers had to probably take out loans for these tractors even if they paid a thousand for a waterloo boy or the 750 for the fordson you're still talking about you know a couple of years of working it off but they did the original tractors were five times more efficient than a horse so you got that kind of level of efficiency by buying one of these tractors and they even costed it out in something like it was a uh, approximately like a dollar forty three uh, an acre or something like that to use horses was your cost and it was like ninety five cents with the tractor there's different cost studies and some of these prices disagree but the real technology is what happened between like 1910 and present days because if you look back to 1910 we had 92 million people living in America and one-third of those people were farmers so one-third of the population were needed to feed the other two-thirds of us and then when you reach 1950, the population on the farm feeding us was 10%, and then by nowadays, it's down to 2%. So you're looking at, if you want to, I mean, this is kind of a gross approximation, but if you're looking at 350 million Americans or something like that, you're talking about 6 million farmers now are feeding 350 million people, not to mention the fact that there's enough surplus that we sell it overseas. So you're talking about the efficiency going from one truck, one acre a day, to the equivalent, uh, I mean, one horse, one acre per day, to the equivalent of five horses, all the way to the equivalent of, I don't know how many horses you would say it is, but let's just say in efficiency, it's probably well over 100 times more efficiency than what it was before if you just calculate out how you need so many less farmers than you did before. You need, uh, instead of a third of the population, you only need 2% of the population, and they're feeding 350 million and maybe... I don't know, how many are we feeding by exporting stuff? Maybe as many again? So you're talking maybe 100, a factor of 100 in efficiency. So I think with those kind of efficiencies and uh, uh, basically the, the timeline too, I wanted to also point out that the timeline uh, was about 1940 to 1945, and depending on the chart you look at, about 1945 was when the crossover was when horses were on their downswing and tractors were gone on the upswing, and that's when they crossed paths. And I think without the gasoline, and when I'm talking gasoline tractors, I'm also talking gasoline slash kerosene. Some farmers would actually start their, um, they had a little reserve tank, and they would actually start the tractor on gasoline, but because kerosene was a penny or two cheaper per gallon, they would switch over, and the tractors would run pretty well on kerosene. So when I talk about gasoline, I'm talking about gasoline kerosene tractors as compared to the huge uh, steam engine traction type of uh, tractors. So anyway, um, that's my idea for why I think that was really a game changer for uh, uh, basically for all of us. I mean, we everybody in the world is affected by the way farming is done now. We wouldn't, well, there'd be no way if we had to go back to not using mechanical equipment we could feed this population at all. It would be mass starvation. So um, if anybody else has any good ideas or anything like that for a single subject uh, uh, type of show, I would really enjoy it very much. And uh, I hope this gave you guys some kind of information. And uh, check out the references if you can. Oh, also, I would like to give a, a plug again 
to the Dumpster Divers site on Facebook, started by my friend Sarah Kellett. Um, there are some cool stories in there. There have been some stuff happening the last week, but uh, I just figured I would let that be uh, part of what the Dumpster Divers page is all about. So if you're on Facebook, look up the Dumpster Divers page and uh, join and become a member. So anyway, that's it for this week. Take care, everybody. I will catch you next week.